In this video, we're going to look at number two from the 2011 AP Chemistry free response questions. So in number two, it says a student is assigned the task of determining the mass percent of silver in an alloy of copper and silver. And an alloy is just a mixture of metals and mass percent, and we want silver, so that's just grams of silver over total grams to turn it into a percent, multiply it by 100, and that's all that formula is. So we're going to definitely need that later on, but we'll get there. Um, and what they're going to do is they are dissolving the sample in excess nitric acid, and then they're going to figure out how much silver is there by a precipitate of silver chloride. So first, the student prepares 50 milliliters of 6 molar nitric acid. The student is provided with a stock solution of 16 molar nitric acid two 100 milliliter graduated cylinders that can be read to uh, one milliliter and 100 milliliter beaker that can be read to 10 milliliters. Safety goggles, rubber gloves, uh, a glass stirring rod, a dropper, and distilled water. In uh, A part one, and notice these are in parts, so that means they're gonna somewhat be related. Um, it says calculate the volume in milliliters of 16 molar nitric acid that the student should use for preparing 50 milliliters of 6 molar HNO3. So when I read this, this comes off as a dilution, so we need to use the dilution formula. So in A part 1, we are going to write our formula M1V1 equals M2V2, and our dilution, we're going from, uh, what was it, 16 molar nitric acid all the way down to 6 molar nitric acid, and we need 50 milliliters of that 6 molar nitric acid. So we're going to solve for V1. If I take 6 times 50 and then divide over 16, my V1 is going to be 18.75 milliliters of 16 molar HNO3. Okay, now let's look at part 2 and see what they're asking in part 2. In part 2 it says briefly list the steps of appropriate and safe procedure for preparing 50 milliliters of 6 molar HNO3. Only materials selected from those provided to the student, which is above, may be used. Okay, so um, what we want to do is I'm just going to number them like a recipe, is we want to uh, put on goggles and uh, rubber gloves. And you could also say apply PPE, which is personal protective equipment. But because they specifically mentioned they want us only to use uh, the things that they provided, I went out and I just wrote it. Okay, now, uh, how can we do this? So understand that a common mistake a student would make while answering this is that they would say, oh, we will use the beaker to measure stuff. And if you've taken chemistry with me, you know beakers are great at holding stuff, but they're not great for actually making measurements. Okay, I know they have markings on them, but the markings are more of a guideline rather than a, a legitimate measurement. Okay, so what I'm gonna say is get the two 100 milliliter graduated cylinders Uh, as those give the best measurements with what we have. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to measure. They only measure to the ones place, so we can measure out one place further. So instead of measuring 18.75, we're going to have to be stuck with 18.8. And that's totally fine for the level of lab work that we're doing here. So we're going to measure 18.8 milliliters of 16 molar HNO3 using the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. Okay, and you could put, you know, be very careful if you've used 16 molar 
nitric acid, you know it's very dangerous um, to use. Um, in the other graduated cylinder, we need to get some water. So um, we need to measure if the total volume is 50, 50 milliliters minus 18.8, uh, that looks like that's gonna be 31.2 milliliters that we need of water. So measure 31.2 milliliters of distilled water. And then uh, the saying is we always add, it says be like an otter, add acid to water. And you do that slowly, just slowly add acid to water. Um, so we're gonna pour the 31.2 milliliters of water into the beaker and slowly add the 16 molar uh, HNO3 while uh, stirring. Okay, you may consider even using the dropper. And this is until all acid has been mixed with the water. Okay, that one was kind of a long one. So again, on the AP test, we don't want to take too long on any one question. Uh, in part three, it says, explain why it's not necessary to use a volumetric flask. Um, calibrated to 50 milliliters to perform the dilution. And the answer to that is very simple. Um, a graduated cylinder, cylinder is a piece of volumetric glassware and gives you enough certainty in the uh, measurements. Okay, now part four says, during the preparation of the solution, the student accidentally spills about one milliliter of 16 molar nitric acid on the bench top. The student finds three bottles containing uh, liquids near the spill, the bottle of distilled water, a bottle of 5% sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, and a bottle of saturated sodium chloride, and which would be best at spilling up or cleaning up the spill, and we need to justify our choice. So one thing to always know in a chemistry lab is the baking soda solution. If you spill an acid, you use baking soda. And uh, the reason it's a baking soda solution is because it will react with the acid and neutralize it. Okay. You could go more, but I don't think that they need you to go more here. Okay. The student pours 25 milliliters of 6 molar nitric acid into a beaker and adds point a uh, 6489g sample of the alloy after the sample completely reacts with the acid some saturated sodium chloride is added to the beaker resulting in the formation of silver chloride precipitate additional sodium chloride is added until no more precipitate is observed to form the precipitate is filtered washed dried and weighed to a constant mass in a filter crucible the data are shown in the table below okay so don't let all those fancy words get the best of you um, we're just going to work through it step at a time so calculate the number of moles of silver chloride precipitate collected. So we're gonna use the last weighing and um, we need to subtract away the crucible. Okay, so 
in part B here, I'm going to take the mass after third wane, and that was 29.2598 grams, and I'm going to subtract the crucible. They call it a filter crucible, but whatever. I'm going to subtract the 28.7210 grams, and I get 0 0.5388 grams of silver chloride. But I believe they asked for moles, so I'll just have to go one step further, get that to moles. 0 0.5388 grams of AgCl. There are 143.32 grams of AgCl for every one mole of AgCl. And so I never expect to get a lot of moles, but I get 3.759 times 10 to the minus third moles of AgCl. Okay. Now, in part C, it says calculate the mass percent of silver in the alloy of copper and silver. So that is this formula. I'm going to bring this down, and we're going to figure out a way to do this. This is part C. There's lots of ways to think about this. I'll try to show you what I think is the easiest way. First thing to recognize is we just need to get grams of silver. We know the total grams. They gave that to us of the alloy. That was 0.6489 grams. So I'm going to add that here. and then we'll multiply it by 100, and then we'll get our final answer. So I'm gonna already box where my final answer will go. There's a lot of ways to do this. Um, we can do complicated math, or we can set up like a stoichiometry type problem. So we can say that 3.759 uh, times 10 to the minus third moles of AgCl, and I just want the Ag out of this. So one thing that's a little bit weird is I can say that in one mole of AgCl, there's going to be just one mole of Ag, and be, that's because the ratio between AgCl and Ag is just one to one. And then I can say that in one mole of Ag, according to the periodic table, there's 107.87 grams of Ag. And so uh, I'm going to get 0 0.4055 grams. I'm going to then plug that up here, 0 0.4055, divide it, and when I do, I get 62.49% silver. And I feel good about that answer because I didn't get a number bigger than the total. When you get percent by mass, you should always get a less than 100%.